Always great action from the AWA, and in this case, absolutely no exception, right? Right. Another of the PWI awards coming up now. This is for the most improved wrestler. Got that? The most improved. The editors at Pro Wrestling Illustrated went to the AWA headquarters to present Kurt Hennig with this award. But, but, look what happened. Is the award for Pro Wrestling Illustrated, voted by the fans, over 15,000 fans, voting Kurt Hennig the most improved wrestler of 1987. Well, you can take that award and you can give it to someone that deserves it like some rookie. That's a rookie award. I'm a six-year veteran and I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. I'm the man that defeated Nick Bockwinkle and put him out of professional wrestling for good. And you want to come to me and give me an award for the most improved wrestler. I've been the most improved wrestler for the last six years. And now I should be wrestler of the year. I've got a closet full of trophies like that. I'm Minnesota's greatest athlete, and I'm the greatest wrestler in the world. Whether you like it or not, that's the way it is. Well, do you believe that? Tusk, tusk. We'd like to thank Pro Wrestling Illustrated and Pro Wrestling This Week for sending us the footage of that and the other awards that we'll be featuring in this particular show. Well, coming up, Paul E. Dangerously and the Danger Zone. His guest is Austin Idol, and take heed of what Paul E. has to say. You know what really went down, Tommy Rich? Paul fight, Tommy Rich! You want to know what really went down in Las Vegas when we hurt your arm? How I remembered about the hurt wrist, Tommy Rich? You want to know whom I called on the telephone who said, Paul E., don't use the phone, <laughs> throw powder, then go after the wrist. You want to know what happened, Tommy Rich? Well, I'll tell you what happened. I have a surprise for you, TR, and you're either going to come back to the Dangerous Alliance and get back together with Paulie Dangerously and this man, or this is going to be the man that puts you down, and I mean puts you down for good, and I'm talking about the Universal Heartthrob himself. That's right. <laughs> He's back. He's back with the Dangerous Alliance. He's back with Paulie Dangerously, Austin Idol. You, you know what really makes me sick, Paulie? What, you know what really turns my stomach? What? You know what I detest? What? You know what I really loathe? Tell me. It's a loser. A loser. And when you and I were taking Memphis apart piece by yeah. piece, week head. after week, doing everything that everybody said would never be done when we took Jerry the King Lawler oh, and we you. shaved him bald. <laughs> right in the middle of the ring in the big, before the biggest crowd in the history of Memphis, Tennessee. Let me ask you, Paulie, who was it two weeks before who came to us on his hands and his knees and he begged and he pleaded and he begged and he pleaded and he said, help me, Tommy Rich. I need help. It was Tommy Rich. It was Tommy Rich. I remember, I remember it was Tommy Rich. It was Tommy Rich because he came and he said, I can't do it alone anymore. He said, I've gone out and I tried to do it alone. He said, I thought maybe I had it in me. I thought maybe I could rekindle the old wildfire. But you see, all I could do was blow smoke. There was no fire. Yeah. He said, I need help. He said, I need somebody. I can ride the coattails me, of fame. Me, I can ride help the me. coattails of glory. I can ride the coattails of somebody who has national, national attention. Somebody of national fame, international fame. So he says, I beg you. Please. I need help. Please help me. He says, Please. if you'll do this one thing for us, right. one thing for me, That's right. I'll forever be in your debt. That's right. And he's turned like the Benedict Arnold that we always knew he'd That's end up right. to be. Right. But I'm telling you, Rich, we took you out of squalor, Jack. We took you from the gutters. We took you from scum. And I'm telling you now, Jack, you've got a choice, and you better damn sure make it quick. Either you come back where you belong, or you pay the price. And remember one thing. You live by the sword. You die by the sword. The choice is yours, Jack. For once in your life, you better make the right decision, Rich. <laughs> You better. Well, we're going to see in future weeks if Paul E. Dangerously really means what he says. Okay, we are off to a new territory, a new wrestling association in the United States of America. We're talking about Southern Championship Wrestling. Tommy Wildfire Rich going against Randy Rose. <laughs> 
Big elbow to Tommy Wildfire Rich. And some of the fans are yelling for Randy Rose. And there's a fan down at ringside yelling, put the fire out, put the fire out. Randy Rose now putting the boots to Tommy Rich. Dapper Dan getting in there trying to break these two men up. Rose has Rich in the corner and is working over the past couple of minutes. The matches belong, Drew Barb, all to Tommy Rich. The punishment that Randy Rose just keeps... Now the crowd is peeking up the chant of Tommy, 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 and Tommy Wildfire Rich. There comes Tommy Rich with an elbow. There's another big elbow from Tommy Rich. Tommy Rich is down. And I tell you, if Tommy doesn't start something here, I'm afraid he's not going to be able to pull this one out. And here he comes. There comes a blow to the midsection. And now one to the head of Randy Rose. And there's that Tommy Rich elbow. This may be the comeback we've been looking for. He put he puts him over the top all the way. Now, wait a minute. Who is this? Pauly Dangerously is on the phone. Who is Pauly Dangerously talking? He's got a sleeper hold on him. Pauly Dangerously is on the phone. In the ring, Randy Rose is in a sleeper hold. And Tommy Wildfire Rich looks like... Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Rumar. That's Austin Idol. That's his former partner. That's Austin Idol in the ring. That's Tommy Rich. Oh! That's Tommy Rich's former partner. They were Southern Tag Team Champions, and now they're using that phone of Pauly dangerously on Tommy. I can't believe Austin Idol. I Time now for Continental Championship Wrestling. Action involving downtown Bruno's latest hero, Lord Humongous. I, I love that name. Lord Humongous, who is the Southeastern Champion by virtue of a victory over Danny Davis. Gordon Soley from Pro Wrestling This Week is reviewing the tape of the match with Bruno and with Mr. Humongous. That's crying toss for Danny Davis. We want everybody to see how we beat Danny Davis and why this is the greatest Southeastern Heavyweight Champion in the history of professional wrestling, Gordon Soley. That's the way it is. Well, I must say this, that we do have a uh, videotape recording of that particular match. And I think it might be very interesting to look yes, at baby. the way Lord Humongous managed to acquire uh, the Southeastern Heavyweight Championship. Let's take a look. Let's go to Knoxville. All right, right here, the Nightmare Danny Davis seems to have Humongous in a lot of trouble. And what are you doing look in the ring? Look at that, look at that. He had no reason to pull me into the ring like that. All he is is a big bully, that Danny Davis. He's nothing but a big bully. He had no business doing that, Gordon Sully. But as you can see, Lord Humongous come to my defense. Because not only is he loyal, but he is <laughs> the greatest professional wrestler and the greatest champion in the history of professional wrestling. Well, all right. Humongous now got in behind Danny Davis and is obviously uh, doing some damage here. But what I'm trying to figure out is I did not see Davis pull you into the ring. Oh, I was just standing there minding my own business. He had no business doing that. As you can see, we got even right here. One, two, three, baby. The new champion and Danny Davis find out it doesn't pay to mess with Don Tom Bruno. Because Mama says it feeds that way sometimes. <laughs> well, that's uh, some interesting comments indeed. And so downtown Bruno... Uh, Resting that belt away. Why are you putting it on? Because I am the Southeastern Heavyweight Champion. Lord Humongous isn't concerned with titles. He just wants to hurt people. I am the champion. I am the Southeastern Heavyweight Champion. But he is the toughest, the meanest, and the baddest man in professional wrestling. He's going to make everybody suffer. Everybody's going to feel his wrath. Everybody's going to be laying on their back looking up at the ceiling because Lord Humongous is the meanest man in professional wrestling. He'll break everybody in half, whether it's Danny Davis or whoever, Gordon Sully. Nobody gets in his way because they're all going to suffer. They can't get to the champion. No way. Well, there's another fellow looking for uh, Lord Humongous, too, and that's a fellow that you're not going to push around quite so easily as you just did the referee, Mr. Furnace, Doug Furnace. Mr. Furnace. You know, he calls himself the strongest man in professional wrestling. Yeah, but body odor ain't everything, Gordon Sully. Body odor don't mean nothing in professional wrestling. We're talking about muscles. We're talking about size. We're talking about knowing what to do with it. And Lord Humongous knows what to do with it, and what he don't know, I teach him. So the man knows everything. Right here, Lord Humongous was fixing to put Danny Davis out of professional wrestling forever, and I was going to let him do it, and this no good son of a gun, Doug Furnace, come out and put his nose where it didn't belong. You know, and he's encouraging these people to call me a weasel. I ain't no weasel. I don't want to hear that no more. I'm disgusted. Well, let me explain to the people, please, uh, if you get my drift, 
Downtown Bruno gets very upset when you call him a weasel. Please try and refrain from that in the future, okay, friends? Well, now to the sublime, our weekly visit to the doctor, Dr. Brian Plowman, to be specific, and this time he is talking about excess dieting. Thanks, Ed. Good to be back in Goals Gym and on Pro Wrestling Plus. But today again, I have Roberta Seeger, well-known fitness and nutrition consultant, and we're going to talk about a really famous talk, topic in the whole field of fitness, dieting. Everybody gets into dieting. And I see people walking around here, they can hardly mobilize their cell. Is it good to diet like that, Roberta? Well, a person can get too lean. Without a doubt, it, everybody is striving to be leaner and leaner these days. Lean seems to be in. The lean machine. Kind yeah, of. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, bodybuilders especially seem to get a little bit carried away with, with the dieting aspect of training in that it's required of them, at least at contest time, to be very, very lean. Right. But a person can indeed get lean to the point where the, it's not healthy. Right. Yeah. Now, they have to get lean so that you can see the individual muscles and you can compare the size and how well they're proportioned and their symmetry and things like this. But, I mean, they diet to the point where they even lose a lot of their muscle mass, which is what they've worked the whole year for to, to gain. Now, what is it that they're doing wrong? How are they going at this dieting in the wrong way? Um, as far as dieting goes, if you're, if you're not nourishing your body, uh, the stress of the diet itself, your body will start overcompensating for, uh, it starts thinking that, that you're trying to starve it to death and that it, the body fat is, since it is its self-defense against famine, if it thinks it, that there is a famine, it starts hoarding body fat and starts using protein as its preferred source of energy. And as such, a bodybuilder can almost get uh, skinny and still be fat at the same time if they don't diet properly. Nourishment is the key. Sure, and then the other thing is that they'll cut a diet down to a degree uh, that they have so few calories coming in, trying to cut out one uh, component, let's say the carbohydrates or whatever, uh, but they end up cutting out other components, like they end up going short on minerals or some of their necessary vitamins. Now, I know they do it for a short period, but that can be dangerous, can't it? Um, if a, if a person is, uh, is dieting so severely that they're not getting all the nourishment they wanted, I would have to say that their energy level would certainly be very, very low. They would be low in, in iron, for example. Yes. That, that could cause uh, anemia. Yes. They could be very, very low in calcium, which, which could cause osteoporosis, uh, which is demineralizing of the bones. Your bone structure actually gets thinner. Yes. Um, in women, they could uh, encounter loss of menstrual periods. Uh, all, all of these things are adverse effects to dieting that, that are the obvious ones. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's just excessive. It, it's, so it's, there's a proper way to do it, and if they follow that, they'll get the results they want and have a good time training. Slow it down, nourish the body, be realistic about what to expect from your body, and you'll be healthy from exercise and diet as opposed to um, unhealthy and lacking in energy. Once again, thanks a lot, Roberta. Nice talking to you, Brian. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Bye for now. Well, we move over to Portland, Oregon for some unusual action, and it's usually unusual in Portland, Oregon. You know that, don't you? At any rate, this is action involving the teams of six-man combinations, that is, Coco Samoa, Scott Peterson, Stephen Dahl, they're the good guys, as you're going to find out. And they're going against Moondog Moretti, the Avalanche, and Joey Jackson. Six-man tag action. And, of course, there's no way that the likes of uh, Joey Jackson are going to let him get over there, or Moondog Moretti, or Avalanche. There goes uh, Steve Dahl into the ropes, and he's elbowed down by Joey Jackson. Uh-oh, we got, we got something going now between Jackson and Peterson. As Moretti once again gets into the ring and he pops Steve Dahl. Now a tag is made with Moretti. And here he comes. Oh, he tags Steve Dahl right in the rib cage. And the dog is now going to be all over Steve Dahl. There's a, oh, that looked like a thumb. That looked like a thumb going right into the solar plexus or in the rib cage area by Moretti. And there goes Dahl into the ropes. A uh, back body drop by Moretti, and Dahl is, has got a whole bunch of problems right now. 
more teamwork. This time it's Avalanche in there driving a fist into the ribcage on Steve Dahl. Avalanche gonna was he gonna get a bear hug on him? No. Oh man, no. A power body slam. Or actually, it was a kind of a, a belly to back or a side suplex by Avalanche. Look out, Avalanche coming down and the mat. He wasn't even close. <laughs> that entire ring just, it just vibrated. I don't think can, the ring can't take much more of that. Look at Scott Peterson here. Oh, we got them all in there now. Now we got all six men in there just wailing away. Coco Samoa on uh, Moretti. Double drop kick on Avalanche and he's out of there. Yes, sir. He's out. Here comes uh, gorgeous Joey Jackson. Close line by Scott Peterson. One, two. Chalk it up. Chalk it up. That's it. Time now to take a commercial break, after which we'll be back with action from World Class Championship Wrestling on Pro Wrestling Plus. Now, with Pro Wrestling Plus, we're going to flip over to Detroit and an event called Bruiser's Bedlam. We're going to be seeing Moose Chalak going up against the Black Saint. <laughs> and I'll tell you, there will be no problem recognizing Moose when he enters the ring, okay? Wonder of the world, I give you Yukon Moose Sholak! Yukon Moose Sholak! This is one fall, a 20-minute time limitation. How'd you like to be a drunk on wood? Woodward and see the moose coming down with that head. You'd never take another drink again. Uh, what a great way to, a great guy to feature here on Bruiser Bedlam as we welcome you back to the Premier Center in Detroit. The moose with Alexander. You're telling me this thing weighs 200 and some pounds? Look exactly. at that. It takes, it takes two guys to get it out of here. Uh, he is one of a kind. There's no doubt about that. He lays in a heavy four. Down goes uh, Black Saints. You gotta give the Black Saint a lot of credit for even signing to get into the ring against Moose Cholak. Well, the Black Saint's no big baby either. He probably weighs 260. Yeah, that's, that's a good point to keep in mind. It doesn't look it when you compare him to Moose Cholak. Moose is such a huge, huge man. I hope the ring doesn't fall down, Terry. Oh, look at that. Amazing. Nice beal by Moose Cholak. I've been in matches with the Moose where the ring just completely collapsed. I believe it. I believe it. The Moose working on that mask. He'd like to All see right, what's so underneath that. It's time to take it off. The Black Saints in danger of having his identity revealed. For whatever reason, he doesn't wish to have that done. But he may not have too much of a choice in the matter here. The Moose with the right hand. Several of them to the head of the Black Saint. There's a headbutt. He's put something in the, under his mask. I wondered about that. He's got that mask loaded, huh? Uh, he's put an object under that mask. He's going to rile the moose up, and I think he's going to wish he hadn't done that. Right, if I was the Black Saint, I'd have left my... Oh, El Squasho. El Squasho, all 450-some pounds, and the three count goes in. Ah, uh, yes. Over now to World Class Championship Wrestling, okay? First, maybe before we get into the action, we want to bring you an update as regards Fritz Von Erich. As you saw last week on this show, Fritz was injured. He wound up in hospital. He spent some time there. He has now been released, and uh, we hope that he has a speedy cover a recovery. We'll keep you updated on that situation. The match from that area is the final in a six-man tag team tournament. How about that? A tournament involving six-man tag team bouts. That's where it's at. We have Terry Gordy, Buddy Roberts, and the Iceman Parsons going up against Chris Adams, Steve Simpson, and Kevin Von Erich. Well, our warm congratulations to the new champions there. The Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine editors have come up with another prize. This one goes to Paul Bosch, who, and this is what he has to say. This is what he has to say when he gets the award. Giving me the Editor's Award for 1987. 
It's really a big thrill. Bill Apter and Stanley Weston, whom I've known for a long time, and the fine crew, they have picked me on the premise that I've been doing over the past 55 years and saying good things about wrestling. Well, I want to tell you, I don't need an award for that. In my heart, I know what wrestling has done for me, and I've always been grateful to it for this particular uh, award, which I never expected when I started in 1932. You know, nowadays wrestling has plenty of power, plenty of fans. Corporations run wrestling instead of individual promoters, little people, as they call us. But I want to tell you that until the corporations become thoroughly aware that the fan is a vital part of wrestling, that the fan is a, has a heart, that the fan vibrates the whole sport, and that knowing him personally and knowing what he wants is the big thing. Wrestling fans are entertained by wrestling, and that is the fundamental answer. May I thank Pro Wrestling Illustrated Magazine. Once again, you do me a great honor. Paul, with some very interesting comments, and I'll tell you something, that's a script that I might have written myself. The mammoth corporations are beginning to squeeze the individual promoters out of the business, and, uh, you know, they're the guys who pioneered this business, and them being muscled out, is, I don't find too attractive. Okay, we're going over to the Wild West now for Wild West Wrestling. The new spoiler faces Bobby Durrell, and I'll tell you, uh, this is a tough match. Is on the card tomorrow, along with the great star Jeff Rates, Bob the Cat Bradley, Jason Sterling, another up-and-coming young man. Ah! A flying body slam, one, not quite two. Give Durrell credit, he fired out of there, even though he's taking a tremendous amount of punishment. Hammering on the back of the neck, and Durrell down again. We've got a big evening of excitement. Starting at 4 tomorrow at Billy Bob's, Texas, right there where you're looking at. <laughs> the new spoiler in total command so far in this bout. He has not let up. While we're talking about Wild West Wrestling, and we want you to go west, go Wild West with us. The great individuality of the great days of the old west and still evident in this uh, great country of ours. And that permeates the entire country as Durrell shows his initiative and desires he fights out of there again. Great move by Durrell. Well, that one, that one put some hurt on the new spoiler himself as he came bounding down there. And now Durrell has a chance. If he has any energy left, he dies. Trying to get his breath. Great drop kick by Durrell. Look out, spoiler. Here comes Durrell. Garland finding. Bobby Durrell looking for a chance now. Hasn't got time to be real. Oh, made a bad move there. Flying into the knees of the new spoiler. Oh, well, the spoiler has a chance to come right back. Uses that bottom rope as a choke. And Bobby Durrell's moment of glory is chance to take charge. Looks like it might be gone as this new spoiler explodes on him again. Across the ring, here comes a backbreaker slammer. One, two, three. Durrell is beaten by the new spoiler. What a what an explosion. Here is your winner, the new spoiler. Time now for the PWI Most Popular Wrestler Award. That's a biggie, isn't it? It was Dusty Rhodes winning that award. Yes, sir. The best tag team award. Who does that go to? The Midnight Express. They come through victorious. And finally, the most hated wrestler of the year, that dubious honor to Ric Flair, no less. And uh, yeah, I think he deserves it. How about you? <laughs> Time now for the ratings. This week, we'll be looking at the Wild West ratings and then the most hated. Here we go.
Time now for a commercial break, after which we'll be back with wrestling action from the NWA and with your letters on Fan Forum. To the NWA. This is a match featuring the Road Warriors, where they really don't have a whole lot of trouble eliminating the opposition. And then immediately following that, we'll have confirmation from Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, that he will not, will not, be quitting wrestling, okay? Here we go. It's time for Fan Forum, and I'll tell you something. We are absolutely delighted that the volume of letters remains unabated. It's, it's absolutely terrific, most heartening, but I have to, I, every week I've got to say this, and I apologize for so doing. We cannot possibly, possibly read all of the letters. I have to pull a few out of the barrel, which I've done again. I have caught leaping blue blazes from some mothers who have phoned me and asked me why their son's or daughter's letters haven't been on because they've written three or four times. I'm sorry. I simply can't get to them all. But let's get to the getting, and we'll start off with our opening letter. It's out of Edmonton. I watch you on TSN with Pro Wrestling Plus and with TSN Wrestling. I think you're one of the best sportcasters since Foster Hewitt. Thank you very much. That's quite a compliment. I don't understand why Jim Davies puts up with the guff he does when he interviews the goons from Karachi Vice. I've watched uh, AWA wrestling. I've also met my main man, Steve DeSalvo, with my four-year-old daughter at the Northlands Agricom building in Edmonton. I think he's a very nice guy. Yours truly, Dick Allen out of Edmonton, and he is a fan of Strangler Steve DeSalvo. Strangler Steve needs a few friends. Okay, I love your wrestling. This letter from Oshawa, Ontario. My favorite wrestler is Chris Benoit. I'd like to know if Chris is in the hospital as a result of act actions by Jason the Terrible. And is it true that Hirohasi is in a wheelchair because of Jason? Let me put you straight on that. First of all, Benoit was immobilized for a while after a wild match with Jason, but he is back in action and very healthy. And the same is true of Hirohasi. I believe he's presently campaigning in Japan along with Owen Hart, a couple of great young wrestlers. Uh, three times a week, I invite my friends over to watch your wrestling. At the end, he always says, uh, one of them says, they don't have enough steel cage matches. I'm not trying to run your league, but I suggest you have more matches like steel cages. Okay. I will pass that on to local promoter Stu Hart in Calgary, and we'll see what he has to say. This letter from Justin Rukarak, R-U-K-A-R-U-C-K, I hope that's the right pronunciation, from Oshawa, Ontario. This letter is from Windsor, Ontario. I hope you read this letter on the show. I'm writing this on behalf of my sixth grade class who like wrestling. I love wrestling a lot because anyone who has seen my room will know why. I collect wrestling figures of the WWF, NWA, and AWA. I think play wrestling is a lot of fun, but the kids at school really wrestle and get into big fights. I'd like to convince them, but then they start wrestling. What should I do? I don't want my friends hurt. If possible, could you send me a picture or something, anything, because I love your show more than anything. Okay, and P.S., please excuse my messiness. Sincerely, James... Breha, B-R-E-J-C-H-A, Breha of Windsor, Ontario. Um, you know, if kids get too rough when they're wrestling, and then it's not fun anymore. I think they're dumb if they do that, okay? Tell them, you just tell them that Ed Whalen says they're dumb if they start hurting each other. That's not what fun wrestling is all about, okay? Dear Ed, I saw the match where Jason the Terrible fought the Zodiac. I wonder why Barry O left the WWF to be in Zodiac's place. I saw a hockey game you announced recently. It was pretty good. I'm sorry that Mad Dog Vashon lost his leg while jogging down the road and getting hit. And this is from Rodney Bebenek, 17 years old, of Campbell River, British Columbia. Here's a letter with a little sort of a pop-up thing in it, very cutely done. Dear Fan Forum, I watch your show every day. It's on. I think your show is the best. I have 45 wrestlers in my collection. I want to be a wrestler when I grow up. I'm eight years old. I am almost nine years old. My favorite wrestler is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And I have to go now. Jay Zaretsky of Scarborough, 
Ontario. That runs me out of time for letters this time around, but we're going to give you the address for Fan Forum, so stand by. We'll be right back after this commercial message. All set? I am. Pencils poised. Paper ready. Here we go. Fan Forum. That's where you get a hold of us. Fan Forum. Box 807, Station J, Calgary, T2A, 1P0. Got that? Fan Forum, Box 807, Station J, Calgary, T2A, 1P0. That runs us right smack out of time. I've enjoyed the visit. I hope that you can say precisely the same. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time when again it is time for Pro Wrestling Plus. <laughs> Goodbye now. <laughs>